Before we get started, I got some sticker shout outs. First, we had uh, Matt, the airborne surfer. I met him down in Anaheim at a conference I was attending, and he passed along some stickers from Jasmine and Hackaday, from Drew over at the uh, OSH Park, and from the 23B Shop, which is the oldest uh, makerspace in, in Orange County. One came in from Gasfab, who we met over there on Instagram, and Chris and Diane Schroeder from C&D Craftworks. One came in from SK Crafts, one came in from Ezra over at the American Piddler, and I've had the pleasure of uh, watching Ezra grow his channel from the ground up, and it's been pretty cool. Anyway, all of them have stickers back on their way to them, and I will leave links to all their social media presences in the doobly-doo below. Now, a friend of mine bought these magnets that are supposed to have like a 50-pound pull on them, and I thought, you know, I could do something with one of these magnets. So one thing I thought to do with these strong magnets was make a device that was patented in 1823 called the Perpetual Wheel. Now, it's not a perpetual motion machine. It's actually just a, a free energy device. Now, the reason it's not a perpetual motion machine is because the ball will wear out. The track will wear out, the bearings will wear out, and the magnet will all wear out. The best you can get is free energy. And the way it works is the magnet pulls the ball part way up a circular track and poises the magnetism against gravity. And the weight of the ball will cause the wheel to turn. I'll put an example of one of these working in the PIP and you can see just exactly what it's supposed to do. And that sent me down a rabbit hole because in researching this free energy device, I discovered a few others that uh, I decided to try to build also. One of them here in the PIP is the overbalanced wheel, which was designed by Leonardo da Vinci. And before we get too far in, I want to let you know right up front that this video is a debunking of those free energy devices. Yeah, but I'm not afraid to tell you that I thought the magnetic perpetual wheel was actually going to work which is why I built one. So I was going to use a disc of aluminum that I had as the flywheel, but uh, when I went to mount it, I discovered that it was thicker on one side than it was on the other, so it would never be balanced. And uh, balance is an essential part of this project. So I went to the uh, Fusion 360 software and created a CAD model of one that I will cut out of a piece of wood. I just happened to have a disc of wood that was an old tabletop, um, so I, I set it up to cut the smaller disc flywheel from that big disc of wood. That's exactly what I was going for. So I need to make a track and for that I'm going to use my handy dandy power roller. I know you probably don't have one, but I do. I've got my helix here and what will happen is I'll slice this at a diagonal here and that will make two rings that will become a track that the ball will ride in. We'll attach that track to the flywheel here, then mount it onto the bearing. After that we'll hang it someplace, put the ball on it and find the balance point where the magnet pulls on the ball just enough to cause a rotation. What we need to do now is figure out the spacing between these rings for this ball to ride in. Alright, here's my track mounted to my flywheel, and we got the ball rolls in it pretty well. This thing's almost ready to test. It wants to do what I think it's going to do. But the magnet's just not strong enough, so I've ordered a stronger one. That'll be here tomorrow. We'll come back then. Okay, one thing I did was I got a bigger magnet, one that I could bolt on to a, a, a bracket. Now, we'll come in here and try to hold this in place, and holding it in place by hand isn't really cutting it. I mean, it's... When it gets close, it pulls, and, and 
So I'm going to clamp it to the table. And we'll pull it away a little bit. Move it a little further back. That is not quite cutting it. It's, it's almost, it looks like it wants to do it. So the idea was that there might have been a balance point where the magnet would pull and the weight of the ball would equalize and cause the ring to roll. And it does not look like that is actually going to happen. Okay, I'm calling this a failure, but you guys came for a free energy device, so I plan to give you one. I have another idea. I guess I got a cannonball. That's for a future project. So here we are back to the drawing board, and that drawing board is Fusion 360, our CAD modeling software. And we'll start with drawing some circles here as guides. We want an 18 inch disc, and then we'll uh, put this hexagon in the middle so we can get some guidelines and draw some circles around it. This is a pattern I want to create. Next, we'll stop the sketch and extrude the parts of the model out that we want to exist in real life. And those that we don't extrude will just disappear off the model environment. After that, we'll create fillets to round off the sharp corners that we're not going to want in the end. Then we can export it all out to the CAM environment and uh, create the file that will allow the CNC router to uh, do its job and cut this piece out of a piece of half-inch MDF. One thing that's really cool about the CNC router is I can tell it to uh, bore a hole even if I don't have that size bit. And uh, that comes in pretty handy when you're doing uh, precision stuff on oddball sizes. Now this design is from a 10 year old memory so I'm not sure why it's not working. Uh, but I have seen something that looks like this work on video. Let me go find some video, I'll put it in the PIP and maybe we can determine what's wrong with this one that it's not working. Okay, look in the PIP here, and here's the difference that I see right off. What I made was half of a circle, and then I put a fillet on what would be the sharp corners. And what we have over here is not as uh, tall a hump. Also, these weights are producing some friction because they're just washers on a bolt. And look over here, you'll see the weights on this thing. Uh, they're larger around and they look like wheels or something. Okay, before I cut a, whole, a brand new uh, flywheel, uh, one thing I want to do is I want to switch from these tiny washers to these big uh, fender washers. So let's do that and see if we get any different result. Okay, that didn't really provide much improvement. But I believe if I come in here and and make the half circle shallower. That might help. So let's go back, modify the CAD model, and then make a new one of these. Now here's my new model. You can actually see the difference in the size of the cutouts. So let's try this one. Okay, let's give it a try. And the only reason that worked is because I had this fishing line on the back. Because without it, it don't work. Okay, so Da Vinci's overbalance wheel does not work. And uh, that's unfortunate. Uh, I've, I've tried a couple different configurations, different weights. This thing just don't work. All of these that I've seen work must be a hoax because that's the only way I was able to get it to work was by making it into a hoax with the fishing line. But I want to get back to the steel ball and the magnet. This did not work so well because it wasn't completely true and it was in a crappy bearing. This bearing is a really nice bearing. Way better than the one I had this on. So I cut out some track segments. So I'll glue up two of these with these track segments on them, and then I'll capture the ball inside, glue the two halves together. And we'll try the ball and magnet thing one more time, because I actually have a bet going on that, and I don't want to lose that bet. Okay, that should do. Now we'll let that set up and capture the ball inside it. 
try it again. All right, cutting out those rails on the CNC, that left a nice smooth uh, edge for that ball to ride on. So now what we'll do is we'll glue these together with these spacers in between them and uh, make sure the ball is captured inside and then we'll bolt it back up to the wheel and try the magnet thing again. Now we'll let that set up. Okay, now that's spinning nice and smooth. And see what we've got going here is this magnet will hold the ball. I'm trying to come in and influence it to move. Well, that sucks. I'm glad I didn't have too much money invested into this. I was sure the magnet and the ball was going to work. Now, what that means is that in this video here in the PIP where they show it being done, it was obviously a hoax. Now I need to figure out how to frame this. I've lost the bet I had, but not for lack of trying. I've, I've been working on this a month, and uh, yeah, I've, I've exhausted all possibilities. I officially give up. I've also debunked a couple of different free energy devices. So I feel okay about that. Anyway, that's all for this time. Thanks for stopping in. Please like, comment, share, and subscribe. Click up here to see my last video. Click over here to see something of mine that YouTube thinks you'll like. Check out the visitors that gave us stickers this time, and have a good one.